Hey, everybody. It's me, Steve Schnee. Hey, everybody. Sal Baglio. And Bruce Brodeen. And you are watching Skips and Scratches. <laughs> I went to uh, two clubs when I was 13. One was the, uh, the, the the Boston Tea Party. Gosh, yeah, legend. I always heard about it. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was the second one. It was on Lansdowne, and uh, I you know I hung around with older older uh, kids, so we went to see Canned Heat, uh, you know, but. It was, it was quite an experience to be 13 and yeah absolutely this, what a cool band to see place but the the other place that i went to was uh revere beach and i saw the velvet underground what yes now the doug yule version i guess doug yule was in the band mo uh uh, uh sterling morrison and I have an argument with some people because I thought it was Lou Reed. That's the band I saw. They had a, 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 a back line of Sun 2000 S amps. And uh, Lou Reed played with the uh, with, uh, shows uh, that's, with the Yule version. That's when, and, uh, and that's the year he left. I went to this club, I think it was called Scarborough Fair, uh, which is the old Ebb Tide uh, in Revere Beach. And um, there was an opening act. Uh, I was young. I was a little nervous, you know, and, and I remember the waitress came up and said it was a minimum. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I looked at my friends and they were like, yeah, we'll take care of it, Sal, you know, and got me a schlitz <laughs> or something, you know. But anyway, anyway, I saw the Velvet Underground. And uh, after that night, I kind of had heard about them. I really didn't know much about them. I just heard about them and I knew it was going to be dark and, and, you know, mysterious and all this kind of stuff. The next day I went out and I bought Loaded. You bought Loaded? Yeah, man. You know, that record is just, whew. <clears throat> that wasn't my first concert ever. That My first concert was uh, December of 69, Janis Joplin. What? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I was 12. The legend continues. I he was, was 12. 12. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was twelve. My brother took me. You know, my my brother was home on leave, um, and uh, the Stones were coming in November, I believe, of that year, and I we couldn't get tickets for it. You know, I couldn't I couldn't score the tickets for it. And uh, but he he got us two tickets to see Janis Joplin at the music hall. We had like third row from the last row of the second balcony. She looked this big. Hey, yeah. look. But uh, wow. it was quite an experience, man. Quite an experience, yeah. My my first concert was Glenn Campbell, 1970, which is only a year, like, yeah, probably probably less than a year after Sal saw Janis Joplin. Sal's, of course, is cooler. But if you think about it, I saw Glenn Campbell after True Grit had come out because the uh, tour uh, program had True Grit advertised. And, uh, but that was my first concert. My second, of course, was the Osmonds and Bo Donalds and the Haywoods, but yeah, can't beat them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, fr um, I still joke with him to, to this day. My first concert was supposed to be Deep Purple in 1972. Um, and my brother sold the ticket to a friend, uh, my ticket to a friend to go to. He doesn't have any recollection of this. Me, I'm still traumatized by it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he felt on... sorry for me. And he took me to Chicago a few months later. So that was my first concert. What common record stores there in Boston? Because, you know, here in California, of course, most everything is gone. Uh, I think the, um, you know, every Bobby store... disc was really big, though, you know, in the Valley, right? It was. It's way gone. I mean, you know, yeah. you, also had, you also had Aaron's and Renee's in Hollywood. You oh, had... Aaron's was great. We had Bleaker Bob's... Uh, on Melrose, of course, you, you can walk into Aaron's or Renee's and you you find something for a dollar ninety nine. You'd walk into Bleaker Bob's and it would be thirty nine ninety nine. So they yeah. were like they were gouging. Yeah, he was legendary. 
yeah, but it was still a great store. And, uh, you know, but all the things like Pepperland and uh, the chains like Licorice Pizza, Music Plus, Warehouse, Tower. Uh, my favorite store for years was uh, Music Market in Costa Mesa. Yes. It was a huge, huge store, this wonderful, huge store. You walk in there with all these things, these things written down, these things in your head. You walk in and it's like, you just forget what you're looking for and you just yeah. start looking. Yeah, you know, didn't you guys, I mean, I always, you know, I had these, you know, written want lists, you know, very meticulous. I know David Bash was like that uh, too. And I still have a lot of these handwritten want lists from the mm-hmm. uh, 70s uh, still uh, there. But you know what, I, I moved to LA in uh, 87 and I had the chance to visit a lot of those record stores um, and they became regular haunts of mine. And it was, um, it was just an amazing experience being a music, you know, music lover. Never, not really a collector. I'm not. I'm very unanal about, you know, how I go about music. I'm very unorganized. I'm very much in the moment, and you know, whenever mm-hmm, I find mm-hmm. something in it, my 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 music has always been scattered in many different places. Mm-hmm. But for me, that whole experience of living in LA and and record shopping was something that I always kind of it's like pinch me. You know, it's like here I am. I'm living in LA. I'm working in the music business, and I'm like buying records. You know, yeah. at Aaron's, you know, was it was you know, yeah. Aaron, you know, Aaron's was one of my favorites. Yeah, it was. It was a fantastic store. There were multiple uh, record stores. I mean, Strawberries mm-hmm. was the biggest. Uh, New England Music City. There was a, a record store called Discount Records on mm-hmm. Tremont Street, downtown Boston. The the one where I bought Paperback Right of Rain, it, uh-huh. that closed down in the in the in the very early seventies. I the last record I bought there was probably uh, Cry of Love, uh, hmm. the Jimi Hendrix record. Yeah, not for me. It's it's Nuggets. I mean, that was and, that was the store that I knew. I was one hundred percent certainty because it was such a ritual. I went in from you know the suburbs of boston from needham uh every at least twice a month for years you know from 1977 to 81 when i went off to college um at least twice a month um and nuggets was my first stop every time practically um and then if nuggets didn't have what i was looking for you know and i had to buy it new uh, which meant i had to spend five bucks six bucks um next door not too far from nuggets uh, half a block was stra- uh, strawberries there in Kenmore yep. Square. Right. And I would get that there. And that's where I bought the first Ramones record the week it came out because I knew Nuggets wasn't going to have it. But, but uh, you know, that was, you know, I was willingly going to buy that because um, I have to show you this because this was the influence. I mean, for us, for music collectors and pa- fans in the seven, early mid 70s, there were to find information about records was really sparse. You know, there was a, not a lot of really great music magazines. I mean, I started I started subscribing to Rolling Stone in the probably 75 or so, mm-hmm. but you know, this was the magazine that was the Bible. You know, every yeah, month it came out, you know, I bought Cream um, and then, you know, discovered, Boy, discovered Trouser Press. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, Trouser 76. Press is my favorite magazine. Oh yeah, no, it's still, I can't leave robbins hasn't sort of done you know done this with, yeah you know some of the best um best of that and you know those you know those they, and rock scene rock scene was another great magazine and that's where you would hear about all these buzz bands especially coming out of new york uh, mm-hmm. like the ramones mm-hmm. um and it's like before i mean it's like i what the words that lester bangs would write about something or richard Meltzer you know, were enough, that was like, that was word porn, you know, yeah. and for the rock and roll soul. And it was like, they spoke a language that I, I could intuit and really understand. Um, and they created desire. I mean, talk about marketing. I yeah. mean, the, the, the art of marketing is to make selling superfluous um, mm-hmm. by, by your, your, the strategies that you use. And for them, it was just their words and their genuine passion for rock and roll. I, I do remember one thing about Cream, apart from being a great magazine. It's the first place I ever saw uh, Grace Slick's nipple. Oh, me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Boy, howdy. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Skips and Scratches. My name is Steve Schnee. All right, everybody. Keep a nickel on that tone arm. This is Sal B saying see you next week. 
And I'm Bruce Brodeen. And as always, pop on. Remember to share, comment, like, and subscribe. Remember to click the bell uh, and get notifications. And we'll see you next time on Skips and Scratches. I wanted to show is I've got this Wink Martindale soda, and uh, hey, 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 Steve, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let, uh, take a look at the title of the show, okay? It's about this guy. Okay, I'll just I'll just put this down. God, he's lean and winky, and he knows how to zoom. Check out Ronnie Barnett's. Ooh.